Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Kevin Kleiches and I make YouTube videos on business and photography. So if you're into those things, make sure you subscribe. I promise you won't regret it. So in the photography world, the word editorial is used quite a bit. It seems to be a big buzzword, but a lot of people don't know what editorial really means. So editorial photography is photography that appears in publications and its main usage is to tell a story or to educate the readers. I feel like most most people think of fashion editorials when they hear the word editorial, but the truth is all sorts of editorials exist out there. There's food editorials, uh, political editorials, um, fashion, business, you name it. So let's talk about how to shoot editorial photography. When you're shooting editorial work, you want to keep a couple of things in mind. The first is composition. Since your images are going to be placed alongside text in the publication or magazine, you want to make sure that you leave room so that there can be words next to the images. Make sure that you also shoot a variety of different angles. So for example, whenever I'm shooting portrait editorials, I will get a combination of headshots or close-up shots, half body shots, and then environmental shots. And remember, it's always better to shoot a little bit too wide than it is too close because you can always crop in if necessary. So now let's talk about lighting. So a good majority of my personal work is shot in natural light, but whenever I'm shooting editorial or commercial photography, I'm almost always incorporating artificial lighting. That's because when I'm shooting editorial assignments, I'm often shooting in dimly lit environments like warehouses or office spaces, and I don't have control over the natural light every single time. Using artificial lighting like strobes gives me control over how my images will look. Now, if you're scared over the thought of using artificial lighting first, let me say, I totally understand. When I was first getting into shooting editorial assignments and having to use artificial lights, it was a bit scary and intimidating, but it is so worth learning and you don't have to go crazy with your setups and get like six strobes and all these different modifiers. Oftentimes you can have one strobe and one modifier and that's enough to completely transform your images. Learning how to use artificial lighting will separate you from the other photographers who only use natural light. It'll help give your images that polished look that magazines and publications are looking for. I think the simplest setup to start out with is one strobe and like a reflective umbrella um, one large umbrella is enough to give you a lot of versatility and you can achieve a lot of different looks with just that one modifier. Next, let's talk about usage and pricing your editorial photography. First, let's get this out of the way. If you're shooting for a magazine or a publication, you should be getting paid. Please do not feel obligated to give away your images in exchange for being tagged on social media. It's important that you realize the value of your work. When photographers continually give away their work, it devalues their work and the industry as a whole. Now, the challenge that a lot of photographers face is figuring out how much to charge for their editorial photography. In my experience, the best way to go about this is to simply ask the publication what their editorial rate is. Now, it's important to note that magazines and publications don't have the same kinds of budgets as say a fortune 500 company sometimes you'll be able to negotiate your editorial rate with a magazine and other times they just have a flat rate that they pay their photographers in either case it'll be up to you to decide if it's worth your time and your effort so the last thing i want to talk about is why you should be shooting editorials i think shooting editorials is great because it gives you credibility and legitimacy to your work even though being published doesn't have the same weight that it used to it's still impressive to your prospective clients to see your work being published in a magazine. Shooting editorial work is also a great way to network and meet prospective clients. I was commissioned by a local magazine in my hometown last year to photograph a young woman who ran in the Olympic trials. The photos that I shot got the attention of Patagonia, whom she already had a working relationship with, and that led me to licensing an image for them for social media. Now I have those contacts at Patagonia, which is great because I'm planning on shooting many more images of her and we can possibly license them for Patagonia to use. So I wanna encourage you guys not to think about editorial assignments as a dollar amount only. They're really much more than that. If you leverage them properly, you can build your portfolio with new and fresh work. You can build credibility to your prospective clients and you can potentially network with big brands and corporations. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.